Hello, my name is Manfred and I am your local guide. Today I want to show you the area of Schwabing, which is for me one of the nicest areas here in Munich. And we will start right after the jingle, so stay with me. So why is it that almost everyone knows about Schwabing? Well, there are exactly two periods that have shaped the Schwabing myth, two periods that actually could not have been more different. First of all, there were the Bohemians and writers of the Fin de Siècle. Secondly, everybody knows about the hippies of the wild 60s. For Schwabing, there hasn't remained much more than the glamour of the old days, but at least the pub and cabaret culture surrounding Münchner Freiheit has experienced a renaissance in recent years. Whereas in the past, would-be Bohemians from the suburbs had primarily visited Leopoldstrasse in the evening, more and more residents are now coming back to the Leopoldstrasse to promenade. Not least promoted by the street festivals, Street Life and Corso Leopold, which take place twice a year. Our tour will lead us along the busy Leopoldstrasse and its smaller side streets to the Erlöserkirche and back through the rather tranquil Altschwabing to the Siegestor. The Siegestor forms the dividing line between Maxvorstadt and Schwabing, where the classistic Ludwigstraße ends and the architecturally rather sober Leopoldstraße begins. The 25 meter high triumphal arch, commissioned around 1840 by Ludwig I from the architect Friedrich von Gärtner, was designed according to the model of the Constantine Arch in Rome. On top is the Quadriga, weighing over 20 tons, with the Bavaria and four lions. Her gaze is directed to the north. In the 19th century, instead of a promenade, there were mostly fields and meadows there at that time. Though the Bavaria looks toward the Bavarian army, matching the inscription, dem Bayerischen Heere. On the opposite south side, a writing reminds of the end of World War II. Consecrated to victory, destroyed by war, warning for peace. The inscription is intended to remind us that war brings not only victories, but also death and destruction. We leave the Siegestor behind and stroll along Leopoldstraße, formerly known as Altschwabinger Weg, until the walking man almost meets us. This unique 17 meter high steel fiberglass sculpture by the American Jonathan Borowski is located in front of the entrance to Munich Reinsurance. The world's largest reinsurer, whose building between Leopoldstraße and the English Garden almost forms his own district, is an important patron of art. The numerous treasures in its interior are unfortunately closed to the public. In order to discover Schwabing's architectural heyday, which coincided with the advent of Art Nouveau, our path leads into the western side streets. Worthwhile objects of such Art Nouveau can be found in the Franz Josef Straße 38, Einmillerstraße 20 and 22, Römerstraße 11, Kaiserstraße 14, and Leopoldstraße 77. From Leopoldstraße 77 it is not far to the Erlöserkirche, which is now on our right in the triangle Leopold and Ungerstraße. It was built in 1901 according to plans by Theodor Fischer. The church is rather inconspicuous from the outside and has impressive Art Nouveau ornaments inside.
the Leopoldstraße does not end here, but its northern part is far less interesting and rather characterized by supermarkets and gas stations. Only the Schwabinger Tor, until recently the largest inner city construction site in Europe, could still be worth a detour. An urban project of the luxury class is currently being developed there. Today's tour takes us from Erlöserkirche back to Münchner Freiheit, which stretches from Ungerer Straße to Feilitzstraße. Right at the beginning, the Café Münchner Freiheit, with its beautiful terrace, invites us to stay. I'm always impressed with the persistence with which this coffee closes itself off to modern coffee houses trends and somehow stopped in the 70s. On the way to Wiedekindplatz, the green white tram and bus station literally catches our eye. If one did not know better, one could think that aliens had built the landing strip here. But it is as always. One suffering, the other's joy. While some consider it a courageous urban statement, residents living in the surrounding upper floors complain about an unappetizingly view of the always dirty roof. Only a few steps further into Feilitzstraße, we come to Wiedekindplatz. To see and to be seen. There is hardly a better place in Schwabing than Wiedekindplatz. Here you can take a seat next to Munich's most band Lattern. It comes from the legendary restaurant by Gisela and is a tribute to the deceased landlady and cabaret patron Gisela Jonas, who once sang about the Schwabinger Lattern in a chanson. Even today, the district around Wiedekindplatz is Munich's cabaret center. The most famous addresses are the Lustspielhaus, for me Germany's most beautiful cabaret stage, the Vereinsheim, the Münchner Lach- und Schießgesellschaft, the Theater Tams, and Hepland Etlich. Each stage is worth a visit. The Castle Suresnes, also called Werneckschlössl, is only a few meters away from the Schwabinger Wiedekindplatz. It was named after a castle of the same name, north of Versailles, and was built in 1718 for the cabinet secretary of Elector Max Emanuel. Together, they spent several months in the exile here. The Seidel Villa at the contemplative Nikolaiplatz, only five minutes away by foot, is completely different. It is open to everyone. Readings, exhibitions and concerts take place here and there is a nice coffee in good weather with chairs and tables in the garden. And if you don't feel like coffee and cake, I recommend the rustic kiosk Alles Wurst, where you will find the best curry sausage in town. We continue parallel to the English Garden and now pass one of the magnificent buildings belonging to Munich Green Trunks. Opposite located is the traditional Munich Café Reitschule. In case you are interested, you can watch from the café the riders and horses of the University Riding School performing their training. Now it is only a few steps back to our starting point, the Sieges Tour. Did you enjoy the tour? Then I'm looking forward to a like. If you want to stay up to date, just subscribe to the channel or better subscribe my blog yourmunichguide.de. Enjoy Munich and have a lot of fun in our beautiful town. Your local guide, Manfred.